And we'll begin with our opening song, Voice Still and Small, played by Rebecca. Do you want At the beginning of each Westwood service, whether in person or online, we pause to affirm that the land where we gather has borne witness to thousands of years of indigenous history, culture, and spirituality, and continues to do so. The following call to land liberation was written by Easton Avery and Alara Stefaniak Gadet. This morning, we begin with a call to land liberation. Wherever you are joining us from this morning, I ask you to imagine, to remember, that this place where these buildings are now, human and more than human history stretches back since time immemorial. Before my ancestors arrived in this place, there were people here, diverse nations of people who built complex societies, civilizations, and cultures over the span of many generations. They gathered, worshiped, sang, danced, loved, lived, and died on this land. They did so in a way unique to here, and they still do. Amiskwatsi Waskahaiken, the Cree name for Edmonton, meaning Beaver Hills, is Treaty 6 territory. It is the traditional home of diverse indigenous peoples, including the Cree, Blackfoot, Metis, Nakota Sioux, Iroquois, Dene, Ojibwe, Salto, Anishinaabe, Inuit, and many others. Land acknowledgments are a beginning, a way to respectfully draw attention to the journey of reconciliation in this place and within ourselves. But to simply acknowledge the original peoples of this territory is not enough to bring about reconciliation and decolonization. There is more work to do. We have to get personal and ask ourselves, how did my lineage arrive in this place? How have my family and I benefited from the gifts this land has to offer at the expense of those who have known and loved it since time immemorial? And what can I do with my agency, my unique gifts, and my access to various forms of power to be in better relationship to the land and its original peoples? Every day is a practice. We must try and try again in a way that is personal to each of us. Good morning and welcome to Westwood Unitarian Congregation. At Westwood, we are building a culture where we are gentle with one another, where we value and practice inclusivity, where we support people in solving problems and in addressing communal and individual concerns. My name is Lisa Stein and I am your service leader this morning. Our speaker is Reverend Ann Barker and our musicians are Rebecca Patterson and Jacqueline Willette. Our technical wizards are Alara Stefaniak-Gadet and Bill Lee. 
We are grateful to be able to meet virtually in the spirit of community. And although we are within our own walls and not within a shared physical space, we take this time to be with one another. For those of you whose spiritual practice includes earth worship, today is the high Sabbath of Samhain. This is the one time of the year when the veil between the earthly and spirit planes is at its thinnest. It's a day of recalling our ancestors, our loved ones who are no longer embodied on earth, and our personal place in the dance of life. However you celebrate, or if you don't celebrate at all, I wish you, I wish you all a blessed day and a blessed eve. We also remember that this and every Sunday service is central to life in our Westwood community. Worship reminds us of who we are, what we can become, how we want to live, and what we hope to give to the community and to the world. If you have a chalice or a candle, this is a great time to bring it forward. Our chalice lighting words this morning come from the Reverend Teresa Soto. There is a moment before dawn when the night is firmly in charge of the sky. There is no arguing with the opacity that holds both a fertile imagination and cover of destruction. Just hold on. There is the moment when the dream we share is newly born, wet and wriggling in our hands. Sometimes it's true that salvific futures look vulnerable and small before us. We remain unsure. Just hold on. Anything good was small at first. You know that Dr. King said, I have a dream. It definitely was not the I have a reality speech. It was real in a different way that could be felt that could be shared, they held on. That dreaming speech happened in August, 1963. And you know what came before was April, a letter from a Birmingham jail. One moment did inform the other, but the future being built could not be known with certitude. They held on. We gather Unitarian Universalists certain only of our power to be human, finding ourselves committed to keeping our word and being our covenant. And then we fail to keep our promises. When that happens, we don't throw them away labeled as impossible. We take up our courage and begin again. We hold on. Sprinkled in the wind, we can hear the question, if we are not white supremacy shaped into religious robes and rituals, then who are we? We are present both in attention and in the answer. We are here. We hold on. We contain multitudes, not just of questions and contradictions, but also of possibilities. We continue to labor for the creation of community in which all of us, not just each, but every part of us, is welcome in our home of faith. We hold on. The words of the Reverend Teresa Ninyan Soto with thanks to Reverend Leslie Takahashi and the Commission on Institutional Change, the poem, We Hold On. So we light our chalices this morning in the spirit of hanging on. I'm gonna light two so I get to do the magical match thing too. There we go. I can't light candles on my bookcase without burning the house down. So. Today, October 31st, when it is said that the veil between the worlds is thinnest, we are going to go on a journey focused on the kinds of thresholds we have crossed over in our lives and perhaps some that we chose not to or were not able to cross. This service centered around the idea of thresholds is intended to be reflective and visual. We hope it invites you into a place of meaning making and possibility. There are three main themes, beginnings, endings, and other transitions. You're invited to dive deep into your own experience or to remain lighthearted and at the surface, whatever suits you best. But first, a story by the Reverend Victoria Safford in between. One afternoon some time ago, I brought my little baby out to visit a very, very old neighbor who was dying that year, quietly and gracefully in her gracious home. 
We were having a little birthday party for her with sherry and cake and a few old friends gathered round her bed. To free a hand to cut the cake, I put my baby down right on the bed, right up on the pillow, and there was a sudden hush in the room, for we were all caught off guard, beholding. It was a startling sight. There in the late afternoon light were two people side by side, two merely human beings. Neither one could walk, neither one could speak, not in a language you could understand, both utterly dependent on the rest of us bustling around, masquerading as immortals. There they were, a plump one, apple-cheeked, a cherry tomato of a babe smiling, and a silver-thin one, hollow-eyed, translucent, shining, smiling. We revelers were hushed because we clearly saw that, there were, that they were dancers on the very edge of things. These two were closer to the threshold, the great edge of the great mystery than any of us had been for a long time or would be for a while. Living, breathing, smiling they were, but each with a foot and who knows how much consciousness firmly planted on the other side, wherever that is, whatever that is, the starry darkness from whence we come and whither we will go in time. Fresh from birth, nigh unto death, Bright-eyed, they were bookends there, mirrors of each other, radiant. Cake in hand and napkins, knife, glasses, a crystal a century old. We paused there on the threshold of our own momentary lives. Then, what shall we sing? Said someone to the silence, to the sunlight on the covers, to the stars. It was the only question then, as now, years later, what on earth shall we sing? I love the imagery of thresholds, doorways, windows, and other openings where the light gets in, where the light gets out, where we might imagine possibilities, and where we might let go. There is a moment before dawn when the night is firmly in charge of the sky. There is no arguing with the opacity that holds both a fertile imagination and cover of destruction. Just hold on. Here is what you can expect today. There are three main parts, beginnings, endings, and transitions. In each section, Lisa will read a poem. Don't worry if the script on the screen is too small for you to read along. It's mostly there for artistic value. We would prefer you listen along. After the poem, I'll say a few words, then Lisa will offer you a question or two to ponder. And you're invited to share your answers, either live by raising your hand, and that's your Zoom hand or your people hand, or in the chat. So there will be some live sharing, and I will read some of the writing that's in the chat without names. Woven between these sections are music and our standard service elements. We've saved the candles of joy and concern for near the end, so you don't have to worry that you've missed them. They're coming. Please keep in mind that this service is being recorded. If you speak aloud, you and your answer will show up in the recording. If you'd prefer to remain anonymous, you'll want to choose the chat option for answering. And during the time that people are answering aloud, you may want to turn your video off if you don't want your image in the recording. Let's begin now at the beginning. Lisa. Filling the Light by Reverend Teresa Ninayan Soto. This is a charm for hope. The first thing to do is tie a string around your finger. Remember that you are not alone. Think of the ways that our best shared futures are braided inextricably with your own present and your destiny. The second thing is to untie the string and let the knots and tightness fall away. Let the burden of bleakness roll off your sore shoulders. Resistance on these opaque horizons only requires one source of strength, one ray of light. Remember that persistence doesn't require all the answers up front, only one. Fortunately for all of us, we have one response, to remain together through awkward times and happy ones. We remember and we find our resolve in one another, a charm for hope, a string. Thank you. 
there is the moment when the dream we share is newly born, wet, and wriggling in our hands. Birth is the obvious beginning, but there are so many possibilities, starting at a new school or a new grade or a new program, beginning a job, buying a house or a car or adopting a pet, planting seeds, literally and metaphorically, launching a business, dreaming a new future, helping someone or yourself to find hope. When I officiate at a wedding or a service of union, I often say something like these words. This version is written for a wedding, but it could be adapted for any ritual or ceremony, any rite of passage or any intentional space. There is no time more open than the moments of ritual where we choose to be fully present to one another and to a sacred promise. The moment where the sun is breaking through and you define your future as you would have it be. This open space of ritual is not only for the spouses to be, it is also for each person present, creating a doorway that each of us will choose how we might pass through. This is a new beginning a transition between what was and what will be. Your union is also an invitation for each one of us to reflect upon our own choices, to renew our vows to our beloveds or to ourselves, to honor our own transitions and to restore our spirits within this sacred space that you have created. For this gift, we thank you. Consider the following words as you enter into the space of beginnings. Dawn, birth, inception, origin, genesis, emergence, creation, rise, opening, fresh, new, launch, unfolding, introduction, Seeds, welcome. What beginnings are you experiencing now? Or what is an important beginning that brought change into your life? So we invite you to type into the chat or if you'd like to speak aloud, put up a hand or put up your Zoom hand and we'll call on you by name. And when folks are done talking, I'll read some of the answers in the chat. What the chat says, new friendships, creating a home-based business. I just celebrated the beginning that changed my life on Friday, my 15 year wedding anniversary. Immigrating to Canada. sharing a home with my beloved, a new way of being in retirement. My pandemic wedding, meeting my longtime life partner, finally coming out at age 36, moving to Edmonton from Winnipeg, getting clean and sober. I would add getting new knees. I got married in October. My son was born in October. My mother's birthday and my husband's ceremony of life happened in October. That's a big month, October. Moving to Edmonton also, almost by accident. Oh, we're gonna follow up on that story. Moving to Canada. Learning new language that fits who I am as a non-binary human. My ADHD diagnosis. Thank you, everybody. Those are beautiful. 
And if you think of something and want to add it, ah, be, beginning life as a single parent, feel free to keep adding them into the chat. After the grief and the loss, the women showed up bearing a gift for their dead friend that would not be repaid. The gift I can bring to my friend is showing up when they appear over and over alive in the most unlikely of ways. I can show up and tell the story of life unlikely in the face of no agreement and where death persists, life continues undeterred. Let us speak of that, of showing up when grief is thick on our shoulders like a wool coat, and when there is no sign that life, much less joy, may yet return. Because where two of us, or three, let's say, stop to think of our friend, to rest in their love, there they will, celebrating the unlikeliest of loves, show up. Showing up for friends. We gather certain only of our power to be human. Endings can be many things, graduation, retirement, the end of life, but they're not all monumental. Some are small and quiet, like finishing a book you have loved or transferring to a new role. Endings are the close of something, whether you have chosen it, like moving away from home, or they seem to happen to you like losing a beloved pet. The thing about endings is they create a space and so often their power and effect in our lives comes from that space, that opening that invites or sometimes forces us across a threshold. Endings can bring grief or relief or lift a weight or literally open a door. Remember, as you ponder these questions, that they are not always sad, not always difficult, not always a time of suffering. They can be calm or peaceful or tender or sweet or any combination of these things. What endings are you experiencing now? Or what is an important ending that brought meaningful change into your life? While you're thinking and writing, I'll read the last entry that came into beginnings, which was learning to be the woman I have always been. So tell us about your endings, what you're experiencing now or that has been meaningful in your life. 
leaving the Yukon, the death of my husband, releasing my first two love relationships, ending my patterns of constantly pleasing others, pretending to be someone I'm not. The ending of my father's suffering with cancer when he passed away in June. Clearly holding the horizon of life in my heart as I go about living. Finding amazing self-direction after leading, leaving paid employment. The death of my parents, both in October. My fistula failing after 10 years, launching me into the liminal. Giving up my US citizenship. My beloved mother parted Earthside in 2017. Her death has opened me up in a way I'd never imagined. I miss her more with both age and time, but her endless love stays with me. My father's death. Ending of my wife's contract, allowing her to start her own business. I'll add my grandmother's death. Completion of creative projects. Divorce. Thank you, everyone. There's a couple more, let's do that. Too many pandemic deaths, four of them too close to home, amen. A year of living, of having our daughter living with us has just ended, we will miss her and the loss of both my parents. Thank you. Our congregation is entirely self-governed and financially supported by voluntary generosity of our members and friends. Donations to Westwood are accepted and appreciated at any time following the instructions here and on our webpage and also through information provided through our annual stewardship campaign. We now take this moment to celebrate our programs, our events and activities that we lovingly support. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live, together I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live. A friend of mine told me about a friend of hers. Don't worry, a lot of good stories start that way. Whose mother gave them this piece of advice. I know they look dry, seem dead. This forest of what was a sway of pink and purple with their spots and tendrils, orchids now sticks. You must save them, put them away for a later season. Then as is likely to happen with the human condition, the mother died and we both feel and imagine the ocean of grief the riptide of loss the friend underwent, undergoes, we have undergone. And then there was the day that the friend opened a door, the sun shone in, leaves quivered, flowers danced in fluid silence, person still alive, flowers come awake. This is the advice. When the cute part of your life fades and the pretty part becomes more faint in memory, you must save what is bare and dry a definite black line against the gray and foggy sky. The beauty will return if you leave a space for it. I must urge you to this because it is likely that you or I will have a dry time in the not so distant future and we remain, locust and drought notwithstanding, always each other's harvest. The advice. We contain multitudes, not just of questions and contradictions, but also of possibilities. Not all transitions are a beginning or an ending. Sometimes they're a slight adjustment that just seems to change everything or a shift in perspective that opens our vision to something new and beautiful. 
Have you ever painted a room and then felt completely different when you're in it? Any transition involves a liminal space, the space after something ends and before something new really begins. Like when you decide to move, but you haven't yet. Or you realize that your friendship isn't working anymore, but you don't yet know if it can be repaired or whether it's time to be grateful for what was and let go. It can be when we are in a new job or home or reality, but haven't yet found our groove. It might be the time between a test and a diagnosis or the time between an injury and the treatment or the healing. These can be challenging or exciting, whether the prognosis feels daunting or hopeful. And even when it is good news, the in-between spaces can be full of uncertainty or discomfort. And all of these are transitions. In liminal space, we may float between multiple realities, not firmly situated in any. Sometimes we get stuck in the in-between, but often it's a lever pushing us to move through something, nudging us into change. Like the wedding reading said, this is a moment of transition between what was and what will be. Let's reflect now on our transitions. What transitions are you experiencing now? Or what is an important transition that brought meaningful change into your life? Not a beginning or an ending necessarily, but something you experienced or later recognized as a meaningful shift. And while you're thinking and writing, there was one more ending that came up after we moved on and that's walking away from a job I had and had wanted for 13 years to accept my new values and priorities to work from home and be more present with my children. And now the transitions. My transition from female to male was my meaningful transition. Contemplating my next career move to focus more on climate change. My parents' increased need for my love, support, and presence. It was a transition for me to join Westwood. Yeah. Letting go and standing still until the way before me becomes clear. Learning to live with a diagnosis of PTSD and beginning the difficult parts of therapy to help my brain transition from fear to acceptance. Considering retirement and what that means. Becoming a widow. I feel as though most of my life is lived in liminal time and space between life and death, dreaming and waking, creativity and consumption. It can be challenging feeling as if most of, I lost it, sorry as if most of life is in and in between. Shifts in responsibilities and role at work as my manager transitions toward retirement. Kids leaving home. Losing my pet dog of 14 years and then seven months later finding a new dog. Transitioning from one anti-anxiety medication to another. Helping my father, always the hard parent, transition into the next chapter of elderhood, whenever that may happen. Staying kind, even when he wasn't kind to me. Becoming a grandmother. Parent-child role reversal with my father. From raking to shoveling. Metaphorically and literally. For me, it's often choosing the next creative project and pondering what that will be. Yeah. 
Thank you, everybody. At this time, we pause to reflect on our week. We recall the milestones, joys, concerns, and sorrows, the changes in our lives and those who need our comfort and healing thoughts. We have shared many of our inner thoughts this morning, and we now invite you to type joys and concerns into the chat while Jacqueline plays Shepherd Moons. This is the last Sunday of the month, and we invite you to type the names of those celebrating birthday birthdays this month while Rebecca plays the happy birthday song. We also recognize and cherish the joys and concerns and birthday celebrations that remain in our hearts. While remaining muted, please join in reciting the affirmation. May the light of these candles inspire us to use our power to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to serve the spirit of truth and loving affection and trusting hope. That was me who missed that slide. I'm glad you, so many of you know the affirmation. 
This is an excerpt from the poem, Open Up the Doors by Linda Susan Ulrich. If you have a chalice, you might wanna bring it forward now and we'll extinguish them at the end. Open the doors more, make room for a shaft of sunlight to cross the threshold, give the dust moat something to dance about. Peek through a single slice of possibility and name even the half hidden truths you see. Open the doors wider still, pour yourself through the gap, strut or sneak or sidle as suits you best. Cleanse whatever scrapes catch your skin and bind up the wounds that keep you from entering whole. Open the doors as far as they will go. Draw on the strength of the stones beneath you. Ground yourself in a firm sense of who you are. Stand as a beacon welcoming the next seeker and shine far beyond the lintel and sill. Open all that you are. Heighten and deepen your connections to the world around you. Broaden your definition of neighbor. Grow into the largest target for grace that you can muster. And pray to become a gateway for even greater love and compassion. You all have named so many meaning-rich things this morning. Beginnings and endings, transitions and dreams. We contain multitudes, not just of questions and contradictions, but also of possibilities. We hold on. We extinguish our shared chalice with this blessing. May we all go with love and care across the thresholds that are ours. May we find peace and truth and comfort when we need it. May we love one another with all of our hearts and minds. Blessed be. Our closing song this morning is Come Sing a Song with Me, sung by Rebecca.
Thank you, everyone, for joining us this morning. We're excited to have Glynis Lieb as our guest speaker next, next Sunday. So we hope that you can make it to that. She's talking about the fight for equity for two-spirit LGBTQ plus folks.